You're listening to episode one of DSA Radio, our podcast from the Direct Selling Association in the United Kingdom. On a once monthly basis, we'll bring you interviews with a variety of people from inside the UK direct selling sector, casting a spotlight and providing an insight into some of the heartwarming stories that our industry creates every day of the year. We'll speak to senior management within some of the UK's direct selling brands, as well as the people who take a direct selling opportunity to generate an extra income or to dramatically and positively change their financial circumstances. In our first edition, I met up with a respected veteran of the direct selling industry and someone who works for the largest direct selling brand in the world. It's a real pleasure to be joined by Andy Smith, the chairman of the DSA, um, but also country manager of Amway. Andy, welcome. Great to be here. Great to see you, David. Before we get into the detail about what you do with the DSA now and what you do with your employer Amway, give us your background in direct selling, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. Love to. Um, I'm an old-timer, David, real old-timer. I spent my whole career in direct sales. I um, actually, a um, bit, bit of a long story, but I, uh, when I was... Um, studying business studies at university i took a i took a year out and did in those days they called it uh, work experience and i went to work at uh, avon cosmetics um, one of our fantastic direct selling companies here in the uk um, and after i graduated i joined them on a kind of their graduate scheme started in operations worked uh, in their operation area and then um, after a couple of years i was invited to the annual sales conference um, I think it was at the Birmingham Metropole at the time. I think they're still doing them there, actually. And uh, a young 20-something guy going to their first sales conference, having been on an assembly line for a couple of years, I totally had my eyes open to the world of sales and the excitement of uh, distributors and consultants um, achieving and recognition on stage. And I and a good party, I'll add as well, at night, I remember. Um, and I thought, God, what am I doing? Uh, what am I doing in a factory? I've, this is really what, where I want to be. And from then on, I've been in this, on the sales side of the business, working for a number of different companies, as you say, David, now with Amway for the last eight years, responsible for the UK and Ireland. So actually... 33 years in the industry, man and boy, all the way through. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes thought, what would it be like outside of direct sales? But I think, you know, once you've been in, involved in the industry, if you cut yourself, you'd, you know, it, you'd, you'd direct selling all the way through. So something I'll do until uh, the day I retire, I guess. So, yeah, 33 years in. People often, I find, get a little scared of sales. If they don't, people think, oh, I'm not a salesperson, I couldn't do sales, but... I find that once people actually get themselves into some sort of sales and marketing role, mm. they never ever look back because I, in my experience, Andy, all the fun people are in sales because these are all the people that can talk and all the people who've got an opinion. What are your thoughts on that? Interesting one. Um, I mean, my experience, particularly with our distributors in the companies I've worked for, very often until they bit know a bit more about direct selling, mm. as you say, David, are kind of put off by, well, I'm not a, I, I'm not a salesperson, I couldn't sell. And actually, in reality, our most successful distributors in the business here in the UK and Ireland, actually, don't sell so much as share their experiences. Mm. And maybe we'll touch on this a little bit we later will. in terms we of will. social media as well. Yeah. And that's the explosion that's happening to promote the industry and the products. But actually, most of my top distributors at Amway, who now have huge businesses, huge networks of people under them, they're not salespeople. They, they wouldn't describe themselves as salespeople. They're just people people so you know they they build relationships it's all about building the relationships and sharing products so it's a lot more kind of yeah. more of a softer approach than traditional yeah. retail or traditional yeah. uh, selling skills that that we were taught back in the day and that's a beautiful thing about the business because everybody can do it people join very often with that with so little confidence but they might have a little bit of a confidence about one of the products they've used mm. they share that with a friend or a family member and that's the first contact, and that's the first sale. They don't know really they've sold it. They've just shared the experience and their confidence builds, and they can, you know, they can do some magical things once that confidence grows. So. The one wonderful thing about DSA member companies is that most of them have wonderful products. And I agree with what you're saying, because if you have wonderful products, you don't actually need to sell. You just need to tell yeah, and interestingly, David, we've seen a shift in the way our business is promoted. And it might be the same reflecting on this for the whole of the DSA, actually. Some, I'm going back 10, 15, 20 years, uh, the companies I worked for, the focus was more on the opportunity. Mm. So let me, you know, I've got a business opportunity, you know, come to a meeting. Let me share or, that with you. Yeah, I'll share that with you. 
that has changed dramatically to a more product-led approach. Mm. And it's an actually, it's an easier conversation with someone, you know, have a, have a try of my energy, energy drink, have a, you know, here's the latest lipstick. So I think it's easier these days for distributors and consultants to make a connection through the product. And that leads perfectly to, oh, by the way, I've, I run a business showing these products rather than the other way around. So we've seen a change, maybe subtle in some companies between opportunity-led and product-led. But we're finding, once again, particularly through social media, products are fantastic leader into a conversation about the whole opportunity in direct selling. Um, and, it, and it's easy to attract the younger generation with the product for sure than come and see a business opportunity. They think mm. that's a bit weird, to be honest, you know, the younger crowd. So Again, interested, Andy, in my experience, I've been at events where I've seen the MDs of companies stand up from the stage and say, why are you here today? And 70% of the reason that hands in the room go up is because they first found the product, sure. not the business opportunity. That comes later, for sure. Back to your story. So yeah. from one huge company, Avon, to now an even bigger one, Amway. Tell us about them and your role for Amway. Yeah, I've been in uh, been in the GM role of Amway UK and Ireland now for eight years. Um, just two years away from my 10-year pin, which I'm really excited about. Staff members get a 10-year pin, so uh, so that's just two years away. So, um, yeah, my role is to, I mean, it's interesting. I've got a job description like every every corporate staff mm. member's got, right? Um, I think it, go, it runs to four pages, but actually I could write it in one sentence, and it's supporting our distributors to succeed. It's almost as simple as that. That's my role. So... Uh, not too complicated in that respect. I've got a fantastic team in terms of you know in terms of distributor services, and you know we get great support from our parent company in terms of product innovation. You know, v- you know, very regularly bringing out new products into our product range. So my role is simple in 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 respect of you know how can we how can we take distributors consultants that we've took you know very many of them who join through mm. the product with little confidence about the, the industry and the business, how can we support them to, to be successful if that's what they want? And because the opportunity is so flexible, you know, it's up to the, the, the individual person as to how much effort, time, effort and time they want to put in and how much, you know, where they want to get to in the business. So my job is the best in the world, actually, because I'm, I, you know, working with our, particularly our top leaders in, in the Amway business, um, listening to some of their ideas for growth, uh, and very often, you know, we find the solutions in some of the challenges that we have in our business through conversations with our, our, our not always our top distributors actually. Very often, some of our new distributors come out with some amazing ideas that, that that we haven't thought of. So my role is very much a listening, collaborative role, and supporting people to achieve. So um, that's what I love about the business. It's uh, it's great. And one of the unusual things for the more iconic brands in direct selling is that Amway have got this superb location on Southampton Row in London. Tell yeah. us a bit more about that. Yeah, interesting, David, because back in, uh, we opened our experience centre, we call it, in 2009, and that was the first experience centre of its kind for Amway globally, actually. Mm. Previously, we'd had kind of exhibition uh, areas yeah. of our of our kind of admin offices that distributors could use as meeting space. But this is the first time we'd gone downtown in a city and open ourselves up to the general public. Um, the main reason we wanted to do it was honestly for brand awareness. What's happened, and I'll mention in a minute, kind of what's happened as a result of, of offering our product to the general public has been a great success story. But the original intention was nobody knows who Amway are, mm. apart from the, and this is a bit of a challenge for the industry as a whole, the people in the industry love it and you know we're great evangelists and our, our consultants and distributors are great evangelists for for what we do but if you don't know anybody connected to the industry you don't you know how would you buy Amway products so yeah we opened our center so we got a retail we've got 800 square meters uh, in in our center in London the ground floor is retail space so we very often have members of the general public coming in to look at our products we call it an experience center because we want to make a great experience mm. so we've got a cafe area they can try our tea and, we, Amway produces tea and coffee they can try an energy drink they can go into our beauty area and have a makeover they can go into our nutrition area and try some supplements mm. so it's a really you know, it's a fun experience it's the the way we, we we try and run the center um there's also a great meeting space for our distributors because hiring a meeting room in london is so expensive so it's free meeting space for our teams who want to come together which is and, it and, which in itself in london is incredible andy yeah sure exactly so so from what started as a, this is a brand awareness play we've developed 
into a situation now where eight years on, thirty a third of all our company turnover, this is UK and Ireland, goes through the tills at the centre, which is my business case was 5% to the finance guys. You know, you've got to do a business case mm-hmm. to get the money. 5% of sales will come from the centre. And they were, wow, you'll never do it, but, you know, sounds good. You better, you know, we'll track it. We're at 30%. But what we're finding is the, the, the conversation, and we were talking earlier about conversations with the general public about our industry. Yeah. The conversation somehow in the past, similarly at Amway, about the product and the opportunity have been different. Mm-hmm. So you'd have a product conversation to a customer, yeah. this is in the kind of the, in the thinking of a distributor, and you'd have a separate pro, uh, conversation about here's a business opportunity, to, probably to somebody else, because they'd kind of pre-select. Mm. You, 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 know, you obviously make a great customer, but this guy I think has potential to be a business owner. Well, actually, in the set in the experience center, and it's been a great training ground for many of our young, uh, newer distributors, even outside the center. It's all the same conversation. Here's the product. And you can build a business from using the product and sharing the product and, and getting others, finding others to do the same. So somehow it's given a backdrop to really simple conversations because that's the hardest thing in a sales role, in a business development role, is how, is how do you start that first conversation with a stranger? That frightens so many people away from the business. But actually you walk in to what is effectively a shop and they say, and I hear it so many times, we have distributors bring a prospect in and I very often hear, this is my Amway business. And I'm thinking, we haven't scripted this, but that's the way they explain it. Product and the opportunity, and it comes together really perfectly under, under one roof. So that's the power. of It's more a prospecting opportunity that we've found in there, as well as the, the retail sales, obviously, which is great to have. But so, so great, so just to add, David, just to yeah. say, so this was eight years ago, and as a result of that, we now have eight centres in cities around uh, Western Europe. And it's been a great success. So we, we're one can of the few can companies. Can Smith claim a little bit of credit for that? No, then? I don't claim, claim credit for everything. I give all the credit to our distributors who've made it a success. Yeah. So we've got, we've got just opened one in Barcelona, one in Milan, one in Rome, where these become communities. And what we've found, particularly in the last five, ten years, mm. this business has become more about community. Certainly the young generation don't want to do the things that our distributors did in you know 20 years ago. They don't want to go to formal meetings every Thursday night. In a, in a hotel somewhere. No. Two hours, presentations, they find so... You know, my kids can't concentrate for any more than 20 seconds before no. they're looking at their next text message or whatever. Indeed. So, um, so the younger generation really seem to take on this whole product-led, different conversations... And, and and within a really nice environment. So and that's what's happening around the rest of Europe as well. So physical presence for Amway has become a really big uh, strategy to attract new people into the business, and kind of linking a little bit to the DSA, promoting our industry as well. We are real. You know, some people you don't you talk to who don't know the industry so well. It's a, it's all mysterious, isn't it? It's very mysterious. That's the general per- perception of what we do. But if you've got bricks and mortar and you can show the product and there's f- people in there and there's a buzz of, of, of teams working together and this whole community aspect, people, particularly the younger generation, go, I get that. You know, Facebook's all about community, just an online community. And very often the young folks want to get involved. God, I'm sounding old now. The young folks want to get involved in face-to-face communities. Indeed. They love that. What I love about what you've done at the Amway Experience Centre and you've very articulately explained that is that Many direct selling companies, it's electronic, it's remote, and the products are real, and you can see them touch and use the products. But to be able to go into a center that's so excellently presented and say, this is my business, you know, I'm part of this, there aren't that many direct selling brands that are actually doing that. So it's interesting that you're having great success. As we talk about that success, and of the experience at center, and we think about Amway more globally now, Explain to us just how big Amway are globally because it's a brand that probably when I have conversations and you say, have you heard of Amway, mm. still lots of people say no. But despite that, I understand you're the biggest direct selling brand in the world. Is that fair? $9.5 billion last year. Uh, yeah, um, and I think a couple of years we became the world's number one direct selling company. But interestingly, that's not something we talk about a lot. No. Because there's always a danger of you know being number one and, and actually speaking to the owners of Amway, and Amway actually is still a private, still a privately owned. owned company. 
set up by two, it's interesting going back to this whole younger generation conversation, two young guys back in 1959 who were real entrepreneurs. They were best mates at school in, in Michigan in the USA. And they, they had a couple of businesses. They opened a restaurant. They opened a flying school. They were, they were Second World War veterans. Um, and then they came across the Neutralite product, which is actually 85 years old. This is our nutrition brand. It's actually the number one uh, nutrition brand in the world. And once again, to your point, David, outside of Amway, nobody's heard of Neutralite, and it's the number one brand, not in direct sales, but in the whole, you know, in the whole retail space. So, just goes to show what potential we do have. But these two young guys set the business up in their twenties, and now their two sons are president and chairman. And in fact, they were over in London back in May. We had a big event we hosted in the London Centre, funnily enough, and I was interviewing Doug DeVos, our, our president about this wow how does it feel to be the president of the number one company in the world and you know what you say he said it doesn't matter it doesn't matter whether we're number one or number five or number ten we don't even talk about it back at home office in the usa we just always talk about how do we become better and how do we support our distributors because we're not perfect how can we do things better even small details add up to the to a bigger picture so actually it's great to be number one in the, in the sense that the size of our business now we're in 80 countries we've got 3 million business owners around the world and we've offered opportunities to millions of people and that's the i think for our owners and for everybody at amway that's what our our daily work is is to give people opportunity now it doesn't matter whether we're number 1 or number 10 in that respect the rea- the reality is all those people's efforts add up to this incredible you know 9.5 a billion dollars <laughs> so it's interesting the perspective of the owners on, on the, the, the 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 size of their business now which they're always staggered by whenever i meet the owners and we fortunately we fortunately meet them quite often they always look in a state of shock that this has happened because their dads, you know, built the business, uh, started a business out of their back, out of their garage, mm. with the, the Neutralite product range, and they went door to door, and then they brought new products into the range. So they still gobsmacked that it's taken off. But it's a, it's it's an interesting sign that even through the generations and now five decades in business, there's been one common theme throughout that time is people want to own their own businesses. They want to be entrepreneurs mm. as much today as they did 50 years ago. Yeah, That's the exciting thing about the industry as well as a whole. And the stats in the UK show that more and more micro businesses, let's call them, are actually starting up. Sure. Um, and our the younger generations, the change that we're seeing now is that the children leaving school who don't choose to go to uni or that come out of uni quite early yeah. are actually now prepared to look at setting up their own businesses for the Absolutely. first Absolutely. It's cool to be an entrepreneur now, David, isn't it? Mm. When I left uni, I remember going to these careers advisors and that was never even talked about. God, I'm sounding like I'm 80. <laughs> I'm not actually, if you're listening to this, I'm really quite young right now. Oh, we'll be showing a picture of you. <laughs> no, but seriously, no, it was, you know, get a degree at that time, get a normally in finance boring but anyway and and find a company that will you can work with for life it was almost that's only yeah. 30 job, years ago job for life job for life yeah. you know and that you know that wasn't even true then but no. that was the kind of approach that people took but now mike is just in fact both just graduated from university this year so many of their friends they haven't yet themselves but they've set up their own businesses oh. you know crowdfunding well that's the most amazing opportunity for someone without capital to get something started and the apprentice and all the people will fund it exactly so i think the direct selling industry you know we're we're in a fantastic place with that younger generation to say you know low um low startup cost company support great products it's all about people and our kids are fantastic the best networkers ever you know Mm. from what i can see they're just networking and socializing and connecting the whole time this could be perfect for them. And I think mm. to ride that wave of entre- is it entrepreneurialism, entrepreneurialism, a word? Yeah. Entrepreneurialism. It is now. Is, it is, <laughs> we've made it up. Uh, it's perfect timing for us, for sure. Andy, when we talk about organisations like yours and you know almost 10 billion global turnover and the other great brands such as Herbal Life and Mary Kay Cosmetics and Avon and Forever Living... What do you think, as someone wearing your direct selling hat now, to those people that say direct selling network marketing doesn't work? Uh, well, it does. But you know what? It doesn't work for everybody. Mm, and I fair. think 
and this is where I think the transparency of the association that we're we're involved with, yeah. um, and we've I think we've made some good progress in the last ten years or so, in my experience. Where, to be honest, and we say this at Amway, and I think it goes for the other direct selling companies you've you, you've mentioned, it doesn't work for everybody. But you know what? For even for people it doesn't work with work for in terms of a business building opportunity, they'll learn something for sure. You know, our companies offer an amazing training. Um, and development for people that, that are interested in that, that part of the business. They'll have enjoyed the products. They're probably still using the products as we yeah. speak. Yeah. And they would probably only have good things to say about the relationships and the people and the companies and the products that they've, they've experienced. So actually, you know, it doesn't work for everybody, but we've got, as you know, David, so many success stories of people that have built businesses. Some small, some large, some huge in these yeah. companies. And I think we can all share those stories in a stronger way and I think hopefully this might kind of um, add to that, well, that story as we as we promote the, the, the opportunity out there. Yeah, it's interesting. I was speaking to a, a leader within another direct selling brand. She's at number three in the UK for that particular brand, number six in the world and similar question I asked about it not working and she says, well, it depends on what your definition of it works means because if it works means that everyone's going to make six figures, then mm-hmm. definitely not. But if it works means that you want to make four hundred pounds a month. Yeah. Then the degree of it working is much much lower. So yeah. it depends what we define as success, doesn't it? It and does. Different for it, all of us. It really does. And I, can I give you a quick example? Of course. Um, this weekend we're going on a, a, a three night cruise. Mm. Uh, it's a local incentive just for UK and Ireland. This is our third year, and um, it's a it's the achievement is based on building a, a team or a bigger team and generating new business for five months. And then we take them on a three night. It's, it's a Royal Caribbean taster cruise. It's all inclusive. They absolutely love it. They bring their kids as well. It's just a party boat. I mean, we're, we're 200 people out of 4,000, by the way. Okay. It's half term week. It's crazy on this <laughs> boat, but they absolutely love it. But just to, to come back to your point about, you know, the, the definition of, it, of something working last year, one and, and most of our achievers actually are young folks who have been in the business for less than two years. Yeah. And it's a stepping stone to, you know, this is what Amway incentives are like. It's a, you know, give you a, a taster, if you yeah. like, a, an appetizer. So I was sitting next to a young guy, I think he was in his late 20s um, last year on our first night on the on the boat. And um, the food, by the way, have you been on a cruise? The food's yeah, fantastic. wonderful. And you can order as many courses. You, you can just order every, all start, every starter if you want. And this food's is pretty I'm, much 24 hours as well, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, it yeah. is. So I sit next to um, Zoltan, this young Hungarian guy, and the waiter brought out his starter, and Zoltan was getting kind of quite emotional and choked, and we'd had a few drinks, and I was just thinking, you know, maybe just, you know, being a, a little bit merry. And he really started, yeah, started to struggle. I said, Zoltan, are you okay? And he said... He said, yeah, I'm fine. He said, I've just realised this is the first time I've ever been served food. And I'm sitting there thinking, I don't quite know what he means. And then it struck me, mm. listening to his story, he'd, he'd, come, to, he'd come, come from hung, from Hungary to Dublin. He's an, he lives in Ireland as a waiter. That's the only work he could find. And he's been waiting tables and he's been serving food. Came across Amway, joined the business. We've got a big Hungarian team in Dublin. And he, he for, for 10 years or more, was the server and it's the first time, you know, we all take this for granted, right? Indeed. And, and he, he got his soup in front of him and was really emotional and said, that I've never had anybody bring me food before. He said it feels really strange because I'm normally the guy... The one serving it. ...who's bringing it across. And I've always wondered what it would feel like to be served at a table. You know, sorry, I've gone on a bit. but that's no, just, okay. you know, that You know, for him, the business was worth it just for that one moment. So mm. it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about, you know, the bigger lifestyle things that are all out there. We know that. Mm. But the smallest things in terms of improving your life. And that's quite an interesting story yeah, in terms it's of a lovely story. what you know what works for one is very different to another. And it's all about achieving your personal goals. Even if you don't even know that it was a goal. When he started his Amway business, he wasn't thinking about a cruise for mm. three nights. But it happened because he put lots, did you know, got some great results. And he was with his team as well, so it was a big team bonding thing as well. There's no question that direct selling has the power to change lives. Mm. Uh, we've yeah. seen countless examples of that. What I'd like to do now mm. is zoom in, in on the Direct Selling Association. I know you're chairman of the council, and we'll come on to what that role means. But first, what's your perspective on the importance of the Direct Selling Association to the industry yeah. here in the UK and around the world? Yeah, great question. Um, I think two things. I think... Um, Two P's, protection and promotion. 
In terms of the protection, I think as member companies, we're somehow protected as being part of the association. Mm. Um, and our distributors are as well, because as you probably know, David, when our, when our member companies sign up as members to the association, in any association around the world, and most countries now have a DSA association yeah. supporting their member companies, we sign up to complying with a code of conduct yeah. that our companies and our distributors live by. And that's a really positive thing for the distributors themselves yeah. because they're, you know, they're building the business in an ethical way, uh, which is really important for all of us. And also for our consumers and customers. Most of our companies have you know, satisfaction guarantees for our product way beyond anybody in the retail space do. Yeah. And I think we miss that sometimes in terms of the message we can give to customers. Yeah. And they give a personal service as well. So I think protection is really important. And we were at the DSAs and within the European Association at Celdia and the, and the World Federation, we work very closely with government bodies to, you know, to understand the latest legislation and to make sure that we're complying with the law. And that's critical. Um, so I think that's the first point is protection. And the second is, you know, promotion we kind of touched on it with the, the Amway Experience Centre as an example. Mm. How do we tell the world about what we do? And I don't think we can do that so effectively with just the figures, the numbers. I mean, the numbers are staggering, right? I mean, you look, go on our website and global sales and UK sales and, you know, European sales. We're a massive, massive industry. But I think where we can really promote the opportunity is with the stories, the people stories that we've talked about. So the work that you're doing in capturing some of these stories. We've got our star awards in a couple of weeks where we're recognising some of our star distributors. And that's, once again, to your point, Dave, it's not all about the top seller or the top recruiter, the mumpreneur of the year, for example, mm. which young mum has built a, a direct selling business and has made it work for their family, you know. So a little subtle change to the way that we're promoting the industry. And I think it's all around the people. Yeah. Because people, cause the general public can connect to that and can... Oh, absolutely. Uh, can, can think, wow, that's me, or that was me, or that's what I'd like to be at some point in the future. And there are so many stories, Andy, of of people that have overcome adversity using one of the direct selling yeah. company vehicles. Sure. They've gone from having literally next to nothing yeah. to having either a very comfortable lifestyle, yeah. lifestyle or an incredible lifestyle. Yeah, and it's wonderful to see, isn't it? It is. That's and that's why we're all. So that's why we all love what we do. So, Andy, back to your role as chairman of the DSA. I know something in the five or six years I've known you, it's something you're particularly proud of. Tell us about some of the duties that you carry out as DSA chairman. Yeah, I've been the DSA chair now for, at the AGM actually, it's going to be four years, 2012, yeah, 2016. It's a role I love. Uh, it's a fairly easy role in that the DSA team here, at, uh, here in Northampton do an amazing job of supporting both the council, and I'll mention the council in a minute, but also all our member companies and our supplier member companies. Because mm. back in the day, before the DSA team were here, I don't know whether everybody is aware of this, the DSA chair was almost a kind of full-time job in pulling all the meetings together, and it was before the days of websites and yeah, online media, and stuff. Yeah. Exactly, so it was probably a little bit simpler in that respect. But now the DSA team are here, and they've been doing a fantastic job for 2011, five years now. So the DSA chairman's role is, is less onerous, but it's, it's really around chairing the council meeting. Um, we have a, a DSA council where we have uh, 14 representatives on the council, all from different member companies. And what's interesting, it's not always been the case, but in the last three or four years, we've been really keen to have a really good mix of people on the council. Because when I joined the council about 10 years ago, it was, you know, just the, probably the bigger companies who were represented. Certain style of doing business was it was pretty similar. Yeah. But now we've got some real young folks on the council, new companies, older companies like Amway and Avon, and some companies that are doing things in, sl you know, slightly different way, which is really exciting for us all, especially in terms of social media and digital. Yeah. So we've got, a, we've got a really nice balance on the council. So I chair those meetings. Um, supported by Linda here, the Director General, and her team. Yeah. And of course, the other, the other event that we uh, were heavily involved with, and particularly in my role, is the conference every year. So, um, you know, we, we help to, to put together the conference content, which is that's our big day of the year for the association, and um, get as many people as we can there to, 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 to kind of connect and, and share experiences and have some fun. You'll have been to some of the party nights Indeed. that we've had. Because um, it's a fun business and we need to reflect that in our, in our conferences. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a role I love because I'm, you know, the other thing to mention is we're an amazing industry. I don't know what your experience of trade associations for other yeah, quite, industries. 
in in we share stuff. Yeah. You know, to a point, of course. But I think we're a great industry because we're a people business. You know, we want everybody to succeed. If if the companies you mentioned, David, grow it double in the next five years, that's fantastic for Amway. Mm. Seriously, because you know it's a it's a better promotion of our industry in general, of our products. There's no losers in this at all. There, you know, everybody wins from growth, yeah. whoever's growing. So we tend to, within the council, going back to the council, you know, we share a lot of experiences to see how we can better ourselves and the industry to basically to offer the opportunity to as many people as we can to build their own uh, their own business. So it's uh, it's a it's a role I love. So until they kick me out, I'll I'll keep putting myself forward every AGM. To, to continue as the chair it's uh, right. it's something and it and it fits perfectly with the amway ethos as well doug devos yeah. our president is the chair of the world federation of dsas yeah. and it's actually an expectation of every general manager in every country in amway to be involved if not the chair of the dsa in that market to be heavily involved yeah. because we you know we want to give some it's not about giving something back particularly but it's about sharing success and promoting the industry as best we can because we all win then i've had the pleasure of being along to a number of dsa conferences where you've uh, very i have to say skillfully moderated compared from the stage i'm not sure skillful is the right (laughs) word but anyway which is uh which is i have to say a great strength of yours andy being able to bring a room together that's what i enjoy i think you're doing a great job and long may that continue i'm going to end by Mm. if i may by asking you now to extend a message I, i suppose to people who are listening to this that are not in direct selling currently what would you say to them about their possibilities to look at this industry to secure mm. an extra income? And maybe some thoughts about a completely new career. So for some it's about an extra income, for some it's about a new career. How might this industry help them and how safe can they feel at least giving it a try? Yeah, great question. I think simply my message would be give it a try. You've got nothing to lose. I think I mentioned earlier it's a really low investment to get started. Yeah, And it's not an onerous task of you know even if you went for a part-time job these days and my kids have done this and i've seen it you know you put a cd for tv together you go for an interview you have to wait for the reply you know this is an opportunity that will have come to you most mm-hmm. likely from either buying a product from a distributor of a yeah. direct selling company or knowing someone yeah. or being invited to a meeting so it's an easier approach in that sense and as i say low investment it really depends on what you want out of the business and we touched on that earlier whether it be you know a six-figure income or a dinner on a cruise ship have a think about what you really want from the future and i think the other thing to mention is the flexibility of the opportunity Mm -hmm. is far and away you know the most attractive part of our opportunity compared to many others Mm. you know even zero zero hours contracts and it becomes it's becoming so challenging for people Mm. uh, in terms of travel and all the stresses and strains of kind of daily working life this is something you can work around your family for sure and many of our distributors who have gone on to build massive businesses started to earn started in the business uh, loved the product to begin with got involved wanted to earn 200 pounds a month for a family holiday or something for the school, for the yeah. kids, and then it, it progresses. So I th- my message also would be don't think this is in 10 years you want to have a huge business. That's, you know, what do you want in the next week, in the next month, short term? Yeah. And every member company will be able to offer that opportunity. Flexibility, great products, and a lot of fun. People only continue to do things if they're number one benefiting it might be financially yeah. and lots of other personal developments an example but also if they're having fun i mean life's too short right you know the meetings i go to with our distributors is uh, you know it's party time because it's yeah. about achievement celebration and if it's something something you're thinking of to build your confidence this is a great vehicle for building confidence and it might not be the right thing for you long term but you'll have built confidence and some skills to use in any walk of life it might be your personal family life it might be a new opportunity Uh, nothing to lose i'd say and some amazing companies to do business with and finally if you are listening and you are looking for a company go to the direct selling association website where you can be sure that 
those companies will afford you and your customers protection. Exactly right. Thanks, David, for mentioning that. Yeah, because our member companies, as I say, are all signed up to the charter, which is providing a great service, great products, great support, in fact, and service. That's really important when you're building a business to to our entre- entrepreneurs out there. So, yeah, don't go outside the DSA for sure. That's why we're here to uh, to protect and support our, our distributors and consultants. Yeah, give it a go. We're, we're here to help. Andy Smith. Country Manager for Amway in the United Kingdom and Ireland and Chairman of the DSA. Thank you for your time today. Pleasure. Great to be here. Our thanks to Andy Smith for his refreshing and energetic insight into the direct selling industry here in the United Kingdom. We hope you enjoyed listening to Andy's opinions and experience on direct selling. Keep an eye on our social media channels and our website at dsa.org.uk for news of our next edition of DSA Radio Podcast. If you're involved in direct selling for one of our member companies and you feel you've a story to tell on our podcast, please send an email to zoe at dsa.org.uk. That's zoe at dsa.org.uk.